Hi, this is Lara with your end of the week analysis for the S&P 500 for the trading week ending Friday 18th of September 2020. I'm expecting overall a bit more downward movement next week after possibly a wee bounce on Monday. The first wave count has more support from classic technical analysis this week. There is some reasonable bullishness in technical analysis indicators. We'll go over that at the end of the video. For now, I'm expecting a pullback or consolidation to continue for another, maybe, one or two weeks. You may find support about 3055, now looks like the most likely place. If I'm wrong though, that might be too low. Elliott Wave Analysis first, Classic Analysis last, and again, this target is provisional, it will change. Within SuperCycle 5, there is already a Fibonacci ratio between cycle waves 1 and 3, and so it's less likely that cycle 5 will exhibit a ratio to either 1 or 3. The target for this upward movement to end would best be calculated at primary degree. I can't do that until primary 3 and 4 are complete, and I know where primary 5 begins. And so this target is going to change toward the end of the bull market, and it could change quite substantially. This target is provisional. The structure expects a simple five-step forward pattern began in March 2009, and I'm labelling it as an impulse. Within the impulse, here's the end of the third wave, the fourth wave, and the final fifth wave begins here. The fifth wave could last a year or more. It could even last two or three years. It could be extended. Within cycle five, so far, primary wave one is over. Primary two looks likely to continue a little lower and it may not move beyond the start of primary one. I'm expecting primary two is going to be relatively shallow. There is precedent for this, for this particular market. Looking at a couple of prior bull markets for the S&P 500, after the big crash in October 1987, the following bull market that began after that crash, within it, its first multi-week pullback, ended in September 1990 and it was only 0.49 of the first wave up. Also, the current or the last bull market beginning in March 2009, within that bull market the first multi-week pullback ended in June 2009 and it was only a 0.3 correction of its corresponding first wave up. And so here I'm expecting this multi-week pullback of primary wave 2 to only be relatively shallow in comparison to primary wave 1 because that seems to be a reasonably common feature of this market. It has a very, very strong bullish bias. The rule applied to determine the invalidation point is primary 2 may not move beyond the start of primary 1. When primary 2 is complete, then I'll expect a third wave up to show an increase in momentum. At the hourly chart level here, here's the end of primary one and the start of primary two. Turns out intermediate B was not a triangle. I mean, I could label it as a triangle, A, B, C, D, E, but E would have fallen too far short of the AC trend line to have the right look. What looks much more likely and has a very good fit is intermediate B is over here as a double combination. So here's intermediate A, intermediate B, combination. The first structure in the double is zigzag, labelled minor W, the double joined by a 3 in the opposite direction, labelled X, and the second structure in the double, a flat correction, labelled Y, A, B, C. If B is over there, then C may have begun. I played with some Fibonacci ratios between A and C, and I can't find a confluence of targets corresponding to the Fibonacci ratios of primary wave 1. So I'm just going to use the 0.382 Fibonacci ratio of primary 1 as my target for primary wave 2 to end. Intermediate C must be a 5 wave structure. So far minor 1 may be incomplete. When minor 1 is complete, minor 2 may last 1 or 2 or 3 days, maybe a little bounce, and it may not move beyond the start of minor 1 above the short-term invalidation point. So far I'm labelling minor 1 with minute 1, 2, 3, 4. That labelling may have to change if this movement moves back into wave 1 price territory and then I'd move this down 1 degree. It would be then 1, 2, 1, 2. 
but so far this labelling looks reasonable. At the daily chart level, if we move the degree of labelling within cycle wave 5 or up one degree, it is possible there was a grand super cycle trend change at the last all time high for the S&P. This does not have good support at the moment from classic technical analysis, we'll get into that next. It is possible and so we should be aware of this possibility. If this is the case, then an absolutely huge bear market may have just begun within it no second wave may move beyond the start of its first wave. A new high, even by a fraction of a point on a tick chart, immediately invalidates this wave count. At the hourly chart level, this now labels minor 1, complete here, minor 2, a double combination, minor 3 incomplete, with 1, 2 and an extending third wave, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So as you can see, there is more than one way to label this little piece of downward movement for Friday. When minor 3 is complete, then minor 4 may be in bounce and must remain below first wave price territory. For this idea, when intermediate wave 1 could be complete with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then the invalidation point has to move all the way back up here to the all-time high, Intermediate 2, a multi-week bounce, may not move beyond the start of Intermediate 1. At the weekly chart level, we had longer term bearish divergence between price and RSI, and then at this high we had a bearish candlestick reversal pattern at the weekly chart level. This would tend to support the second Elliott wave count. Volume was pushing price lower, the last couple of weeks but range is really small it isn't really very convincing downward movement bond balance volume is at weak support that should sorry that should say support not resistance bond balance volume is at weak support this may assist to halt the fall in price ADX is indicating still an upward trend it's a lagging indicator for the last couple of weeks We've just had a pullback within the upward trend. MACD still fully bullish and ATR declining as price moving higher, very normal for this market. There was quite a lot of weakness in this upward movement and so this downward movement is absolutely unsurprising to relieve extreme conditions. Within these upward sessions here, there were four upward sessions where negative volume dominated total up-down volume. And then we had this exhaustion gap closed and a strong bearish engulfing candlestick pattern. Prices reached support at 3295 this week. Stochastics just reaching into oversold, but not really properly oversold. It did reach oversold here, and so we saw a little bounce. I'd expect a little bit more downward movement and for stochastics to reach back properly into oversold before I expected this pullback would be complete. It was an options expiry day for Friday, so although it looks like a strong downward day, options expiry skews that data. At this time frame, after reaching very extreme for the upward trend, ADX is now declining, the DX lines are whipsawing, there's no clear trend at this time frame. On balance volume gives us a weak bearish signal at the daily chart level, supporting the idea of a little bit more downward movement before price reaches net support and stochastics reaches properly oversold. RSI in neutral territory, there's still room for price to fall, although if this is a pullback within an ongoing bull market, it doesn't need to reach oversold. We'll be looking at stochastics for that. Let's have a look at breadth and volatility because there's some bullishness there. At the weekly chart level, this is the AD line, Lowry's operating company's only AD line has its all-time high back here, whereas the NYSE All Issues AD line has followed through and matched new all-time highs with price. But Lowry's operating company's only line is a little bit off its all-time high back here, so there's now over seven months of bearish divergence. That does allow for the conditions to be set where that second Elliott wave count could potentially be correct and so it is a possibility to be aware of but at the moment 
there is not a lot of bearishness in the last couple of weeks to suggest that that wave count is actually correct. This tends to favour the first wave count. The AD line this week moved higher, whereas price completed an outside week. I consider that to not be divergence, but it is leaning bullish. At the daily chart level, however, price has made new lows below these two price swing lows. The AD line is elevated. This downward movement here in price does not have support from a corresponding fall in market breadth. Market breadth remains relatively strong compared to price. And so this looks like a pullback within an ongoing upward trend. Price and inverted VIX. This week price completed an outside week. Inverted VIX increases. This is not divergence, but it does lean bullish. This week VIX has moved lower, as has VVIX. But VVIX has made new lows below prior short-term swing lows. VIX has not. I'm reading this as bullish for price. Although VIX is declining, its volatility is declining faster, which would tend to be bullish for price. At the daily chart level, the Friday price moved lower, but inverted VIX has moved higher. Downward movement on Friday has not come with a corresponding decline in VIX. VIX, sorry, with a corresponding increase in VIX, VIX has declined, and so this is bullish for price. Price has made new lows below these short-term swing lows. Inverted VIX remains very elevated above those points. This divergence is bullish for price, supporting the view that this is a shorter-term pullback within an ongoing upward trend and not the start of a huge bear market as per the second wave count. That's all from me this week with your S&P analysis. I hope that all of our members are having a fabulous weekend.